So as we see here, a buffer solution is an AquaS solution in which you have a weak acid and its conjugate base, or a weak base and its conjugate acid. The most important thing about a buffer is that the pH of it will change very, very little, even if a strong acid or strong base is added to it. You add strong acid to a solution, the pH wants to go down. You add strong base to a solution, the pH wants to go up, and it happens pretty much immediately but these buffers will prevent that from happening and the main reason I bring up this topic is because they're so important in your life um, these buffer systems are a way to keep the pH nearly constant in a wide variety of situations both in chemistry industrially and in you because as it says there many life forms can only thrive in a small pH range and a great example of this that we'll see here is our blood. They're really kind of necessary for these enzymes to function properly. You might remember our video project and one of the videos posted was cheeseburger and acid and when you put the cheeseburger into hydrochloric acid it dissolved and turned black and mushy but it took a while. When food goes into your stomach it digests and it breaks down but nowhere near as fast as we need it. We're a complex life form we need energy right away and so we have these enzymes that speed up our metabolic processes. So if the pH is off these enzymes can denature and not work and so we do not want that to happen. One of our main buffer systems is the carbonic acid bicarbonate system and it helps to maintain our blood pH between 7.35 and 7.45 when you go below that it's called acidosis when you go above that it's called alkalosis and f not far out of that range you're gonna have some serious medical consequences and that's what that article that I gave you is about industrially as we see here buffer solutions are used in the fermentation process making ciders pickles um, alcoholic beverages wine beers etc also for the setting of dyes and to cal um, calibrate those lovely pH meters that I've mentioned before in class. So that's the gist of buffers. Again, check out that article I gave you to get a little more in-depth um, information on what's going on in your body as far as our buffer systems. Our next little topic here is neutralization. The fact that when an acid and a base get together, they neutralize each other. For example, strong acid nitric acid turns pH paper red. Strong base sodium hydroxide turns pH paper blue. Both of them have pretty dangerous consequences to humans, but yet when we mix them together we can get a nice neutral solution, as long as we mix them together in the proper amounts. Because what happens is, when an acid and a base react, the hydroniums and hydroxides can't coexist together. They'll bump into each other and they will make water and then what's left over is a salt remember in chemistry class any ionic compound is a salt so the sodium from the sodium hydroxide and the nitrate from the nitric acid make the salt sodium nitrate and of course the water and so because of this neutralization fact we can do acid base titrations and when we titrate an acid and a base, we mix them together until we hit the equivalence point, which is when we have a neutral solution. For us, we know that we hit that spot when we see a color change, because we're going to use an indicator to tell us when we get to a neutral pH of 7. And when we do titrate, one of the solutions we know information about the concentration and for us it's going to be the base and we're going to, to use that to find the unknown concentration of the acid and we're going to use this lovely little equation where A's stand for acid and B stand for base plug and chug math and we'll be able to calculate the concentration of the acid that we're going to use we're going to use a burette which is a very accurate um, volume dispensing device and we got to make sure we watch the bottom of the meniscus in order to get good accurate readings. One of the things that makes titration challenging is that when you're adding base to the acid the pH is going up slowly 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 but then right around the equivalence point boom it's very easy to pass it 
and what ends up happening is you overshoot the finish point but because of the lovely properties of acids and bases we can simply add some acid and bring the pH back down and try again so that eventually we can hit that equivalence point point. and I'm going to demonstrate a titration we're going to do them on the iPads as well it'll be a fun stressful exciting lab for you alright until then bye